The Idiot's Guide to Peace of Mind. I told a reverse story to a large audience on Friday evening in Bird's On the following Sunday, an angry parent came to tell me off. He had a tent that talked together with his tent is home. On Saturday evening, his son wanted to go out with his friends. The father asked him, Have you finished your homework yet, son? His son replied, As a child from taught us at the temple last night, that was done is finished, see ya. The following week, I told another story. Most people in Australia have a garden with their house, but only a few know how to find peace in their garden. For the rest, the garden in the trust another place for work. So, I encourage those with a garden to nurture its beauty by walking away. And nurture their heart by just sitting beautifully in the garden and trying not to give. The first idiot thinks this is a totally good idea. So, they decide to get on the little tops out of the way first. And then they will allow themselves a few moments of peace in the garden. After all, the love does need more wind. The flowers could do with a good watering. The leaves need rocking. The birds need running. The bus needs sweeping. Of course, it takes up all of their free time to, to get a ration of those a little chop. Out of the way. The work is never finished. So, they never get to have a few minutes of peace. Have you ever noticed this in our cultures? The only people who rest in peace are found in the cemetery. The second idiot thinks they are much smarter than the foot. They put away the rest and the watering cans and sit out in the garden reading a magazine rapidly with glossy pictures of nature. But that enjoying your miniatures not finding peace in your garden. The third either but way on the gardening terms on the magazine, newspapers and radios and adjust this in the pee of their garden for about two seconds. Then they start thinking, does love really need moving? And those birds should be run soon. If I don't water those flowers within a few days, they may die. And maybe a nice gardenia would go well in that corner. Yeah. With one of those on amateur first path in front. I could pick on up at the nursery. That's the enjoying thinking and planning. There is no pain of mine there. The smart gardeners consigned us. I was long enough. Now is the time to enjoy the fruits of my work. To listen for the peace. So, even though 
the lawn needs mowing and the leaves need rocking and blah 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 not now this way we find the wisdom to enjoy the garden even though it's not perfect perhaps there's an old Japanese monk hiding behind one of the birds ready to thump all and tell us that our messy old garden really is perfect. Indeed, if we look at the work we have already done instead of focusing on the work that remains to be done, we might understand that what don't have been finished. But if we focus exclusively on the faults and the things that need to be fixed, as in the care of my break one in my monastery, we will never know peace. The intelligent gardeners enjoy their 15 minutes of peace in the perfect imperfection of nature. Not thinking, not planning, and not feeling guilty. We all deserve to get away and have some peace. And all this deserves the peace of us getting out of the way. That's after getting our career. Last 7 15 minutes of peace out of its way. We carry on with our gathering duties. When we understand how to find such peace in our gardens, we will know how to find peace anytime, anywhere. Especially, we will know how to find peace in the garden of our heart, even though at the time we might think that it's just a mess with so much to be done. Guilt and Absolution A few years ago, a young Australian woman came to see me at my temple in birth. Monks are often sought out for a fight on people's problems, perhaps because we choose we never chance a fee. She would torment white guilt. Some six months reversely, she had been walking in a remote mining community in the north of Western Australia. The work was hard and the money good. But there was not much to do in the hour of work. So one Sunday afternoon, she said get to her best friend and her best friend's boyfriend that they all go out for ride in the bush. Her girlfriend didn't want to go and neither did the boys, but it was no fun going alone. So, she cut chores, August and but just until they gave in the agreed to go on the fry in the bush. There was an accident. The car was on the lost gravel road. The young woman's girlfriends were killed, the boys were paralyzed, and the bride were her idea. Yes, she wasn't hurt. She told me with sorrow in her eyes, if only I hadn't fought them to go, she would still be here. He would still have hit less, and shouldn't have made them go. I feel so terrible. I feel so guilty. The first thought that came into my mind were to research 
her that it wasn't her fault. She just didn't plan to have the accident. She has no intention of hurting her friends. That thing happened. Let's go. Don't feel guilty. But the second dose does come, of course. I bet she hurt. That's lie before hundreds of times, and it obviously hasn't worked. So I pulled, look deeper into her situation, then told her it was good that she felt so guilty. Her face changed from sorrow to surprise. And from surprise to relief, she hadn't had this before. That she shouldn't feel guilty. I guess that's right. She was feeling guilty about feeling guilty. She felt guilty, and everyone was telling her not to. She felt double guilt: guilt over the accident. And guilt of feeling guilty. How a complicated mind work like that. Only when we had that with the first layer of guilt and a top list, that it was on right for her to feel guilty. Could we reset the next test of solution? What to be done about it? The helpful Buddhist saying, "Ray the light a candle, then complain about darkness." There's always something we can do instead of feeling upset, even if that something is just sitting before me. For a why not complaining? Guilt is substantially. Difference from renewal. In our cultures, guilty is a verse that harms our own hard work by trust in God. And if no one else burns us, we will look to burn us ourselves some way or another. Guilt means punishment deep in our. Spite. So the young woman needed a balance to absolve her from guilt, telling her to forget it and get on with life wouldn't have worked. I said, "Yet, does she volunteer for work?" At her local hospital's rehab unit, just in the casualty of road accidents, for there, I doubt she would wear away her guilt with all the hard work, and also, as usually happens in voluntary work, be held so much by the very people she were there to help.